Mark, never a great scene, but we look here and we've got a gentleman who's lying in a hospital bed or, or stretcher. And, and uh, we know that load cells have become very critical in applications such as this for the medical markets. Could you explain a little bit about where the load cell comes into play here? Sure. Um, this is a, a really good graphic representation of a transport stretcher that's used for internal use at a hospital. And they're gaining uh, popularity for um, procedure type uh, facilities that may do a knee replacement, that type of thing. And then the person is out uh, in the same day. So um, they're certainly used to transport a patient around a hospital, get a baseline weight, but they're also critical for after the operation, after the procedure, patients placed back on that uh, transport stretcher. And those load cells not only can capture weight, they'll capture a loss of weight. So if a person starts to come out of anesthesia, they get more alert, they try to get out of the stretcher, um, it's gonna set off an alarm, alert a nurse, hey, this person's coming out of their anesthesia, they're more alert now, you need to uh, attend to them and obviously stop them from getting out of the stretcher, but also start to uh, wind down their stay uh, for the, the procedure so they can get prepped to go home. So. The load cells generally are placed um, underneath the patient area because it gives you the most resolution. You can place them down in the feet. Um, it weighs the entire uh, uh, scissor lift, but you lose some of the accuracy of uh, tearing off the weight of all of the stretchers. So the best place is underneath the patient itself. Okay. What are some of the load cells that we have that could support this application? Well, this is our uh, model 380 planar beam. This is a small version. We make a larger one that goes up to uh, 200 kilogram. 150 kilogram is a very popular capacity for stretchers and beds. Uh, it's easily mountable. Obviously, this is a small one, but the concept is the same. It's a very narrow, very thin load cell. So easy to mount, mount it about the four holes, and then the weight is applied at the uh, center load hole. So uh, again, very simplistic in design, very accurate and uh, easy to integrate in uh, an existing bed or existing stretcher. It's easy to just slip it in. Okay, so the benefit there is low profile. It, it really is. Okay. And then this is our 1022. It's a single point. It's an aluminum load cell. They're commonly used in an application where you're gonna put a platter on the end of the load cell and they're compensated. So when that weight moves around uh, in the platter area, the weight is still stable. The load cell is not indicating that the weight is shifting. So these are very popular in medical applications where you have a tray and you have uh, saline or any other renal systems, any other type of fluid that needs to be uh, monitored and managed uh, with a platter that can receive uh, a, a bag of fluid. Uh, hysteroscopy machines is another good example. So um, very versatile, the Model 1022, and very easy to integrate into that type of medical application as well. Great. Thanks for explaining those examples, Mark. Really appreciate it.